Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hello and welcome back to Right on Track. I am so excited because joining me today is Chris Andrucci. Hey, Chris. Hey, thanks very much for having me on. Of course, it's awesome having you. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's a uh, it's a sunny Tuesday here in Nashville, Tennessee, so I can't complain. For sure, I am definitely holding on to the summer days because fall is right around the corner. Well, I'm so excited you're joining me today because we are going to be talking all about writing for other artists. And I know this is something you're aiming to do and I am as well. So I'm super excited to chat about this. But before we dive into our conversation, can you share with the listeners a little about yourself and how you got started in music? Yeah. Um, so I'm a singer-songwriter um, originally from, from Scotland, so I do have a little bit of a different accent. Um, but I now live in Nashville um, as a full-time songwriter and performer. Um, I've always been musical. Um, I went to university in the UK and Scotland to to do business. And, you know, in my third year, I got the chance to go out to North Carolina on uh, an exchange program. Um, and I've always been the kind of person that loves to go and experience new things. So I did just that. Um, I went out to uh, North Carolina and had a great time. And I was always playing music and writing during that period of time. Um, and I got the chance to come up to Nashville a couple of times and play some shows. And I was fortunate enough to to sign a publishing deal uh, a few weeks later. Um, so, yeah, I finished my, my university degree back in Scotland. And then I started the process of, of getting a visa to come and to come and live and work in the USA. So, you kind know, of fast forward a couple of years of COVID and a bunch of other stuff. And we eventually made it out here. So I'm very grateful to be here. That is fabulous. So I'm super excited to start our conversation. Can you kick things off with a quote? Yeah, so I'm going to give you one from Tracy Chapman. Songwriting is a very mysterious process. It feels like creating something from nothing. It's something I don't feel like I really control. Why did you select this one? I think for me, um, when you you read that, it kind of hits home. Uh, I've got a a tattoo on my on my arm it's a biblical verse it's uh, Matthew 18 20 and uh, I remember the first time I read that verse and then when I actually read this quote as well um, it all kind of ties together because it is a mysterious process you never really understand what's going on and the biblical verse of Matthew 18 20 it says when two or three of you gather in my name there I am with you and as soon as I read that, I was like, wow, this kind of links to the co-writing process, you know, where two or three, you know, songwriters or artists get together. And sometimes you just cannot explain the magic that happens in that room. Um, and I think, you know, that quote when it says, you know, it's something you can't really control. Sometimes you go in and it's a tough write, you know, it's a four or five, six hour write. And, you know, you come out of it and you're like, mm, you know, that wasn't that wasn't, you know, very very productive or you got a song down but it wasn't the best but then sometimes you go in and it's just a magical experience and you know that's that's enough for me to fall in love with with the whole process and 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 you know experience every time when when you get those really magical moments so yeah I think I think it's it's a crazy cool process and there's no real method in the madness of it but uh, and a lot of people actually don't understand it I don't think you know um until they experience it so yeah I think it's a great quote and um it ties in with with the way I kind of think of the the music business and songwriting as a whole I love your interpretation when I first read this I didn't jump to the co-writing side of things but it's so cool that you went there when I first read it I was thinking of the inspiration side of you have an idea for a song you went through some kind of experience and you're basically turning nothing there's no lyrics there's no music no anything and you're turning it into something tangible that is so beautiful and special and so I think that's just so mysterious how 
we can take things we've experienced and interactions with people and make it into a song. But the way you were taking it, I absolutely love that because when you get into collaborations, there is a mystery element to that. You don't know necessarily what you'll write about. Maybe you'll come in with some ideas, but there's no way to know what the future holds for that song as you start writing it, where it will go. You don't know how those relationships will evolve. And so I think as songwriters, we're so open to all these mysterious things from the inspiration to the collaborations and that just seeing songs come to life is the most amazing thing. Yeah, 100%. I, I do agree that... I think there's there's just something kind of special about it. I think I think at times there is kind of bigger forces at play, whether you know whether you believe in a god or whatever. But I do think there's 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 some other forces and factors that that can play on the the, the writing process and the relationships in the room. Uh, and it's it's an amazing experience to be part of. Absolutely. So for you as a songwriter, why are you more interested in writing for other artists than yourself? That's kind of a good question. I've um I get asked a lot because obviously I play I play a lot of music as as a performer myself. Um but I always get asked, you know, oh, do you want to be famous and you know, I, my my kind of view on that is for me is I don't I don't I'd li- I quite like to live a normal life. You know, I like to be able to, you know, walk down the street and go for a coffee or walk into a bar and, and sit down and, and not really get bothered. Um, so that the idea of being famous to me is like a little bit too much because it infringes a lot into a lot of your life. So when I, when I started writing stories and songs, um, I thought it would be a really cool life to, you know, write songs for other artists and people and, you know, be the person that walks into the coffee shop or into the bar and, that song's playing and everyone's going, oh, let's say it's a Morgan Wallen song or it's, a, I don't know, Luke Bryan song or something. And they're all going, oh, that's so cool. It's a Luke Bryan song. And I'm sat there not getting bothered, but knowing that I wrote that and I'm getting paid, you know, every time that's played. Um, but I also I also love um, just writing for, for, for people because they all have different, you know, styles, genres and... Um, I, I never like to pigeonhole myself. So being a songwriter, I can do a bunch of different things. And then I can also release the stuff, if, you know, within my own artist style um, at the same time. So I like to to kind of have a broad spectrum of what I'm doing. And just being a songwriter uh, for other people uh, allows me to do that. I love everything you said. I can definitely relate to not wanting the whole fame thing for me like I love to record my own music I love being in the studio I love releasing music I love doing interviews like that's fun but I'm using my independent artist career to show credibility and have something to show for my work like if I meet a songwriter or an artist I want to write with it's like oh yeah go to my website here's my EPK so you have things to show for it so I think even if you don't want to really go down the big artist route having that music out there for people to discover you and see your work is so important I think and also for me I just don't really like performing a whole lot I do it because it's part of the artist thing and another way of income but I could never see myself touring I don't have that in me to do that Um, but on the other side I think it's like so awesome to be a part of somebody else's songwriting journey and artist story and what they're trying to tell because I think for me it's like I love hearing people's stories and I've always considered myself to be a really good listener and I'm good at like taking what somebody says and kind of communicating that back to them or displaying it in a song in a really unique way and so I found like It's kind of fun when I'm co-writing with other artists with the potential possibility of getting that song released because I get to take the backseat a little bit. It's like the spotlight's on the artist instead of me writing a song that I would love to sing. I'm giving them a chance to say, tell me what's going on in your life. What do you want to write about? And kind of putting them on the pedestal and in the spotlight and making sure that the session is tailored to them as the artist and so I find that really fun and definitely different than writing alone totally I think um I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there you know writing with 
and being you know more of the songwriter uh, in the room I think you're going to get a different challenge every time when you're writing with different artists um you know different songwriting styles and you know you know the way they handle themselves in a room so I, I like I like the challenge you know I like to I like to go into different rooms and you know I'm not going to say feel uncomfortable but, but, but kind of be put on a spot at times and have to come up with you know different ways of writing than than I would normally do um because if I'm just writing myself with my circle of writers and artists that I usually work with you know we've we've gotten to the groove of how we how we work together and quite often it's the same process you know we do the same thing and um, I'm not saying we get stagnant or or that the process gets boring or anything but constantly bringing in new artists to work with um and and can as you said put them on the pedestal is, is definitely something that that keeps me you know switched on and 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 really really you know working um as a songwriter so i think i think you're right i think it's great to to just expand your horizons of who you're working with constantly and you know and, and see where you can end up for sure. I really like how you brought up how you like the challenge because I'm definitely the same way. I think there's multiple sides of it, whether it be the challenge of going into a room, knowing you're writing for an artist and having that pressure of I want to write something with them that's really good because you want the song cut. And the other side of it is like, I feel like I have a responsibility. Like, it's part of my responsibility as a co-writer to make sure that that artist is able to communicate what they want in the best way they can. And so there's some times where when we're writing, especially lyrics, and maybe they have a line and they're really, really drawn to it and it really speaks to them and that's like their favorite line. But I might think maybe that could be stronger, but there has to be a balance between, okay, is that line okay for the song? Because if the artist really likes it, then you want to make sure everything in that song speaks to them. So even though I might have a, a different line that I think may be better, like it doesn't really matter what I think completely. And so I think finding that balance of making sure the song is good quality while also making sure it's what the artist wants is really important. Yeah, it, it is a balance. And I, I'd noticed that kind of moving forward with my songwriting career. I kind of was laughing when I was when you were telling that there because there's a line in, in in my circle of writers that we regularly write with when someone someone's like set on an idea for a line they're like oh yeah let's say it's the artist they're like this is this is this is the line and you'll always have someone in from my group of writers that are always like oh yeah I don't hate that and it's kind of <laughs> just like it's like everyone kind of it's like it's a good line but we could probably we could probably better it but I do agree with you when you say it's it's finding that balance between satisfying what the artist is looking for because if you change it too much from what they're they're kind of feeling and hearing and and you know seeing what they're going to release and hearing that in their mind if you change it too much then your chances of getting the cut or the release completely reduced so yeah it's, it's a balance and and you know that's something that comes with time I think uh, as well just learning how to how to handle yourself in, in rooms and, and certain situations. For sure, yeah. And also it's like when you're writing with artists, their lives and their experiences might not align to yours. They might be wanting to write about something you've never experienced. And so I think it's so important that I've tried to kind of see myself as, okay, I have my artist side when I'm writing my own stuff and I have my songwriter side where I basically need to be really empathetic and really listen and make sure I understand what they're saying in order to communicate it because sometimes it's like I can find myself thinking about what I would say if I was writing the song or how I would do the melody if, if it's my range but at the end of the day it's all about the artist and their style and you mentioned earlier on about writing in different styles and that's something you can do more as just a songwriter than an artist in my artist music I definitely have crossover pop and country and some other genre flavors just because I don't like to be tied down by one specific genre I like to be creative but I definitely think that writing for other artists with different styles just makes you expand like for example I'm currently co-writing a Christmas song for an artist that I'm hoping that gets released and it's like 50s doo-wop style and I've never written a song in that style before. So I had to make sure I 
listen to music in that style, really immerse myself. So I knew what I was doing when I started to write. Yeah, I think that's that's really cool. Um, I do I actually do love. I've always loved like kind of fifties and sixties stuff. Yeah, uh, gr- growing up, I used to always listen to that. But um, yeah, totally. You know, you can end up kind of blocking yourself into certain genres, and that's the comfortable thing to do because you know that's that's the music you like to to create yourself and and play and put out. Um, but also by doing that, you're completely limiting. Uh, your chances you know or or you your chances of getting songs released so you know funny you say that I'm mainly in the in the country genre um I've done some stuff moving into pop but my recent cut that's coming out next at the end of next month in September was I got sent a dance track just with the production um of the song like last year at the end of last year and they were like hey can you put some words over this and I'd never done that before, but I was like, I, I, I've always been the kind of person that's like, I, I, I usually say yes to any opportunity and figure out how to do it as I'm going. Uh, I've always just done that in, you know, many different things in my life and situations. But I did that and I had to, you know, learn because writing a country verse and a, and a pop or dance verse is completely different. You know, there's there's um the expectations of the genre are different in terms of the writing you know you don't want to have a really full verse and a really full chorus and a dance song because it's more about the music you know um so I had to learn uh I I actually wrote it over a couple of days and it was a self-write and I uh yeah I got the news last week Uh, I was actually back home in in Europe I was in Spain on vacation uh, and I got the email through to say Sony Europe for we're, we're going to release it um through a couple of their artists so I'm very excited for that but it's it's back to your point you know um you I had to really think about the writing process and actually research it a little bit because I you don't I didn't want to just turn in something that was okay yeah it's a country song with with like a a, a European yeah. dance beat over it because I knew that was never going to get cut um so yeah I think and that, again that's back to the challenge of it you know I, I I love that you know it's uh people think what we do is you know the the stereotypical view view on our lives and what we do is that oh yeah we're you know we don't like to have a real job we don't like authority we don't like this you know we're we're slackers but I apply myself harder than I've ever applied myself in any job before any college degree I've had so um I think it's it's a it's an amazing thing what we get to do and you know as obviously I'm very blessed to do this yeah, absolutely. That is so cool you were talking about the top line opportunity because I am in a very similar boat right now where I've never done it before. And a couple months ago, there were two different producers who actually reached out to me like very close together. And they were like, yeah, we're working on these like projects. One was an album. The one was for a single for hopefully an upcoming project. And they were like, we're looking for artists to chop line and feature on the songs. And I love dance music and I've always wanted to feature on a song. So when two people reached out at the same time, I was like, no way. But then I felt like a lot of pressure because I'm like, okay, I've never done this before. I listen to that kind of music, but I've never written a song like that before. And so I literally created like a long EDM dance pop playlist on Spotify and I just listened to it over and over and over again and then the other thing too it's like the one gave me a title like he was really set on this title and so I had to write from the title and make sure it fit the vibe and the other one had a very specific concept for their album already and so they basically told me the storyline of the album and was like these are the missing pieces we need for the project write a song that fits that so i'm like okay so i basically had to tailor my process not only to the style but to the message and writing from a title and those kind of things and so it definitely was a challenge um i actually tracked vocals for both songs so i I don't have news yet on if they're actually going to make it or not but Either way, it was just a really great experience because after doing that twice, like when one of those opportunities would come around again, then I have more experience with it. And it was just all around super fun because that's something I've always wanted to do. And writing in a different genre, that just added more to my list of styles that I write with. No, I think that's really cool. And, and I wish you all the best with that. Thank you. Um, 
but yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's like a constant update of your, your resume for me. That's how I see my songwriting career and my artist career. You know, these, these things might be, you know, they don't, they might not mean much to a lot of people and yeah, you might not get the cuts that you want because it's, you know, they're hard to come by in general at the moment, just the way the industry is set up um, at this current state. But um you know, these little things before, you know, if you constantly kind of build this resume, you know, as I'm kind of using quotation marks here, but um, before you know it, you know, you've, okay, yeah, I've written 10 songs and and EDM, I've written 400 country songs and whatever. Before you know it, you've got this kind of, you've got this, I don't know, I guess it's your catalog, but it's just, there's all these little, little things that you've ticked off and that's going to round you off more and more as a, as a gifted and crafted songwriter. And, um, you know, you can't, you can't say no to opportunities. And I think if you do that, then, um, you're going to miss out on a lot of cool things. For sure. Yeah. It's also like just trying to meet as many songwriters and artists as possible. Like whether that be doing classes or going to shows, retreats, anything like I'm a part of a handful of things and there's an artist that was looking for collaborators she's a pop artist and she hasn't released yet and so when I saw her post about this in a Facebook group I'm part of from retreats I've done my mind immediately went to okay I write pop music that's one number two is she doesn't have any released music yet so she doesn't already have a big group of songwriters around her and so people always say like if you get in with somebody at the beginning you're most likely more likely to stay with them as they continue to write and so I like jumped on this opportunity and I messaged her and we got on a FaceTime and I personally think and I'm sure you you can talk about this more too is like when you first meet somebody, it's really important to get to know them before you just dive in and write a song to see if you work well together and have things in common. And so we were on this call and we had so much in common. I felt like I was talking to a friend I've had for years. And now we're on our fourth song and it's only been like two months. And so one of the songs she already decided for her debut single. And so it's just seeing the opportunities and being open for them and then jumping on them because you never know. Yeah. And that's really exciting as well. Um, Yeah. It's another kind of funny thing. You know, that was one of the issues when I first moved to Nashville. I've always been, you know, I I don't have an issue walking up to someone and being like, (laughs) hey, I love love what you do. I'd love to work with you. Yeah. Um, and Nashville is a big, it's a big networking hub. You know, people are constantly out. You could easily go out seven days a week and, and be around music and have beers all the time. And, you know, it's a crazy lifestyle if you really choose to live it like that. Um, but when I first got here, I, you know, I didn't really know many people. So it was a case of, OK, right, I've got to go out and, and treat this as if I'm, you know, at a conference. You know, every night I'm going out, I'm going to shake hands and you know buy someone a beer and you know if I get the chance to jump up and play I'm going to do that um but you're right you know I I I thought I was like I remember after a couple of weeks I'd only had a couple of rights and a few people really were helpful with me and took me under the wing but there was people that I was like I remember calling my dad he's like "How, how are you getting on out in America and I said it's great I said but uh I feel like people are I feel like maybe because I'm foreign, people don't want to, you know, don't want to work with me. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, but I think now that I've kind of went through that full process and now I'm, you know, quite an experienced songwriter out here in Nashville myself now, it's exactly what you talked about. It's like I was maybe walking up to people and be like, hey, let's write. And they were like, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, like we'll we'll figure something out. And it it took some time to get to know them. You know, I had to meet them a few times and hang out with them and see what the vibe was. And, you know, as soon as I understood that, I I was like, okay, that's it's not because you're an outsider. It's just because they didn't know you. So I think that's a really important thing, as you said, um, is to is to take the time to to get to know the person, see if you guys kind of gel. And, um, you know, even now, I kind of feel like a bit of bit of a bad person sometimes and these new people from town come in and they're like hey 
you know, I'd love to work with you. And I always tell them, I just tell them straight off the bat. I'm like, hey, let's, you know, let's grab a beer or a coffee sometime and, and, and get to know each other first. Because I wish someone had told me that when I first moved here. So, but yeah, I think that's a big thing. Um, it's just about the fit and, and the kind of feel that you're going to get from a person or a, or a group of people. So it's, uh, it's a very interesting process. It's very different. It definitely is. So I want to transition a bit into the things we need to keep in mind or qualities that are necessary to be successful at this and to be known as somebody who's great to work with. So I think the main thing is always trying to stay positive and being kind. Like if you're on a co-write, that's just not going well. And you're sitting there thinking like, I just want this to end and I'm never running with this person again and I don't want to do this anymore. Like you kind of have to hide it and just get through it and not give yourself a bad look because I feel like something I've noticed very quickly is like people in the industry talk and it may look like a huge business, but it's actually small and a lot of people know each other or know of people. And so if you are a good person and you always bring positive energy and are enthusiastic, then if you have a good experience with somebody and they think they had a great experience with you, they'll probably start talking like, oh, I wrote this song with so-and-so and and we had a great time and maybe they're an artist and they're like, oh, maybe I'll write with them too. So it's always about just being a good person, I think. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, The first piece of advice I ever got when, when I first moved over here was, was from the main guy, my publisher at the time. And uh, he said, Chris, you know, all you need to be here in Nashville is is to be a good hang. And, uh, you know, we, as I said, we don't really talk that way. And back in the UK, we speak a bit differently and compared to Americans. But I was like, what does that mean? And he said, well, just be, just be a good p- person. People are going to want to work with, with someone who's fun to be around, you know, you know, you know on time and you know is is just it's just a good energy and um kind of learning that and and always having that in the back of my mind has has really opened a lot of doors for me and uh I think it's something that you know I I get asked a lot about you know what what's the kind of advice that you would give someone that's wanting to pursue a career in songwriting um and that's what I tell them I said you know treat it like a nine to five and just be just be a just be a good person you know and I think um, if you do that um, and work work your ass off and work as hard as you can, some some cool things will eventually come to you, whether that's in six months or six years or whatever. You know, thing, things eventually um, take place if you're doing doing the right things and doing them, you know, to the best of your ability. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree how you said just treat it like a job because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make careers out of this. So the same things apply, just like common sense things, be on time, be nice, you know, like go out of your way for people too. Like it's not all about you and your songwriting and what you want to do with your own career. If you see an opportunity to go out of your way to do something for someone else, then do it because people remember those things. There's a lot of songwriters, there's a lot of artists, so anything you can do to stand out from the crowd is important to do. And the other side is like, the whole thing with being a good person and wanting to work with someone who's really nice, it's the same thing with us. Like, I, like, maybe there can be this huge big name artist that I can get in the room with, but if they're not a nice person, I don't care what your title is. I don't care if you have five Grammys. If you're not nice, I don't want to work with you. And so I think it just comes down to like the relationships first and having personal connections, really connecting with that person and then seeing where it goes. It's not always looking for the big names. It's looking for the people who you personally connect with and that can make something great with. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think if, the biggest thing for me is if the fit doesn't feel right and that's nothing really personal that can be something like I've I've got friends here that are songwriters and I love them to bits you know they're like my best bros and my best buddies and I'll always I'll always you know do everything for them that I can you know I'll answer the phone at four o'clock in the morning if I need to but you know we we just don't get on in the writing room it's just you know and that doesn't mean they're a bad person so I think it's also just the fit so if you know, someone can be a good person. It might not be the right fit in terms of being in the room with them, but they can also be a bad person, and it just makes the whole experience like awkward. And and you're not going to be giving your hundred percent to the to the creative process. So 
yeah, it's, it's a kind of, again, it's all down to a balance of, you know, figuring out what works for you and you, you just kind of emitting as much of a, of a kind of good vibe as you can. I think that's, that's probably the advice I would, would give from my experience. Absolutely. And the other thing too is like, you're not going to connect with everybody. Like, even if you're a nice person, if you actually have the skills to do what you're doing and you know the business and you know all the things, like if you're the perfect songwriter, you're still not going to work well with everybody. And I think that's important to remember because like some co-writes I've been in didn't go well. Maybe it was me, maybe it was the other person, maybe we just didn't work, but you can't take those things personally because you're not going to fit with everybody. And I think the coolest thing is like once you find the group of people who you become great friends with and you write great songs with, you consistently go back to them. And then you're way past the stage of we need to get to know each other. And you made it to the stage of, hey, we're friends. Like, let's just sit down and write a song. And hey, you're an artist. Like, what do you want to write today? Like, wh- what song do you want to write? And so you have that beautiful relationship to create songs with these incredible people and then over the years and the more artists you write with you'll start finding more amazing collaborators along the way and you'll just con- continue to build and grow your circle yeah yeah that's uh it's an interesting thing you know uh, when I first came here um I was trying to write with as many people as I can and as many artists and you know casting my nets so far and wide and I remember um was one of the you know, older writers that said a few number ones that was kind of giving us some advice and stuff like that. And he says, you know, but he says, what will happen is your circle will really reduce and you'll have a, a core group of writers that you, that you like to work with an artist. But he says, eventually you start to, he says, it's like graduating um, and sc- graduation in school. There's all different uh, years. So he says, Right now you're like a freshman here in Nashville, so you'll have your core group of writers and then someone from your circle will, will get a chance to graduate to the next level of their career. And he says, as long as you're continuing to work with them and bring in some new new up and coming artists to provide yourself with more opportunities, he says, quite often, if you're doing the right things and being a good hang and being a good person, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be taken up to the next level with them. And uh, that, that enough for me was to be like, Hey, you know, there's there's some sort of direction in this crazy industry, you know, um, and I think that's really cool. So my my circle went from I don't know I was writing with so many people to to ha- to maybe even like ten people that I could continuously write with, and then we just bring in artists around around what we're currently doing. Um, and I love that now because there's so much more trust and faith in what we're doing. And you're right, you know, I don't need to go in and be like oh kind of small talk hey how you doing because we've already done all that I love how you brought up trust and I think that's a great point to wrap up this conversation on trust is so important especially in the music industry there's so many shady people some people aren't in it for the right reasons so when you have that group of people who you can trust and have them around you and you continue to work with them and nurture relationships you're exactly right and that's why I think it's so important to start with having a small group of people that you're kind of on the same level with maybe a little above or maybe a little below because if one of you rises you all are going to rise together and that's the coolest thing when you have this group of people who you trust, you're friends with, you kind of graduate together and move up the ladder. And so that's why I think it's so important to focus on artists and songwriters who are kind of in your level rather than trying to always shoot for writing with people who have number one songs and awards and stuff. Because they probably did the same thing when they were starting. They had their group then one of their artists made it, they moved up with them. And so it's the same thing. And I think if we remember that and remember to find the people we trust and stay connected to them, then we will continue to grow and rise as well. Yeah, totally. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's the exciting thing of what we're doing is, you know, there's you never know when those opportunities for, for the rise or the graduation, whatever you want to call it, to the next kind of level are going to come um, so you just got to keep your head down and, and keep working at it. Absolutely. Well, Chris, this has been a fantastic conversation. Before we go, are there any final thoughts you would like to share about writing for artists? 
Yeah, I think I think for anyone that's looking to get into it, I think it's a case of you've got to kind of get to the epicenter of it all. Um, for me, that was personally coming to to Nashville because the sounds and the and the stories that I were I was wanting to tell really did align with country music. And um, when I got here, I really I, you know there was things that I was naive about, but there's also things that I was like, wow, this is just incredible. There's so many talented people here, so many, um, you know, artists that are looking for material. Um, and, you know, I, I never really always knew that I was going to write for other people. I kind of came here with the, the chance of 50-50 going to be an artist or 50-50 going to go and be a completely be a songwriter. Um, but getting getting to the hub uh, of of, of the kind of genre of where where you're wanting to go definitely will 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 give you opportunities that you, you probably never even knew existed. Um, so I think getting to the kind of epicenter of what you're trying to do is a big part of it, and uh, you just never know what's going to happen from there. So I'm just really excited to keep writing for 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 the people I do write for uh, and the new opportunities that will come along, and also for you know my new music that I've got coming out as well. So. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the advice I would give to anyone that's looking to get into it. That's fabulous. One thing I just want to add real quick is that it's always important to continue to develop your own craft because me personally, when I just started songwriting, there's absolutely no way I would have been able to co-write with another writer. So you need to be confident in your own abilities before you write with somebody else because if you're at the level of having the skills to songwrite and you know the genre and you know how commercial music works and all of that then it's just going to be a smoother process because you're not going to be stressed out about all the things you may not know and so just continuing to further your education and growing as a songwriter is really important yeah yeah totally um and i think it's you know songwriting is a, is, is a muscle at the end of the day and uh, i think you know it's very easy to get to get reliant on co-writing and i think you've got to go back every now and then and work the muscle of a of a solo right um because you know i've, I've heard horror stories of guys that have been in nashville for years and and all the because it's very easy just to co-write all the time and collaborate um and you know they, they they say you know now i sit down myself and i can't even finish the song and that's and that's their job you know um for you know if they're writing on their own so i think yeah totally you've got to you've got to continually work on your own craft your own style your own sound and your own writing um and then you know as long as you're doing that you can apply that to to many different things in the industry perfect well chris it was an honor having you can you share with everyone where they can find you on social media and your website if you have one and listen to your music yeah so you can get me on all the socials at chris a music official and my website is chrisandrucci.com um that's a-n-d-r-e-u-c-c-i is my last name it's italian it's weird (laughs) well it was so awesome having you on for such a great conversation listeners i hope you enjoyed this episode with chris andrucci and of course until next time stay Stay right right on on track. track